Today we're going to have a look at a pen that was sent to me by William. And I appreciate it. Thank you, William. Uh, this one, I definitely had fun with. It's um, a Wingsung pen. Pretty affordable, as a lot of these pens are. And I kind of like it. I will admit, I was very pleasantly surprised by this pen. So, I'm going to cover the past of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the very top of the pen. Finial, nothing, just sort of gold-ish. Is it real gold? No. Uh, then we have the clip, it says Wing Sun. Center band, it has 235 on it for the, uh, the, the model number of the pen. But before we go on, I would like to tell you about this clip, because much to my surprise, it's a spring-loaded clip. Very nice. Very nice to see that in a pen of this price. I'm not saying it's unique, but it's very nicely made, and I, I really enjoy that because it's it's tough too. It doesn't just pop out. It's it's well made. You have the barrel, sort of tapers down, and I have this interesting reticle pattern on it, which I think is quite nice. Now, before we go on, interesting thing is it's a it's as far as I can tell it's a metal pen. And it's super light, it weighs almost nothing, super light pen. So people who are looking for something for long writing sessions, this may be it. Cap simply pops off, then you reveal a very interesting nib. Now for those of you with eagle eyes, yes, the uh, feet is a little bit misaligned, but I'll, I'll come back to that in one second. Just give me a sec here. Interestingly shaped nib. It's almost like one of those tubular nibs from uh, from Schaefer, Visconti or something. Uh, interesting. Um, so, it says made in China. I assume those characters mean Wing Sun, or stand for Wing Sun, I should say. You see it's a sort of a, a pretty tapered little nib. Interesting. We have the barrel, little gold ring. Is it solid gold? No. Uh, the whole section tapers down. This ring has a little bit of relief, so there's a little bit of texture. Then you can unscrew the whole thing. And you have a built-in uh, aerometric converter. So you push down on this, there's a little sack in there, you put in ink, you push it, the sack compresses, you let go of that bar, it decompresses and it, in result it sucks up ink. Problem with those things is that they often... I'll see if I can... There you go. Often they just don't fill completely. So some people just pull off this thing. You have to be careful not to pull off the entire sack, of course, because it's it's stuck in place there. And they just squeeze the sack to draw in more ink. It's a reasonable size sack. So, I mean, it, it does definitely hold some, some ink. Uh, but, which is the bar, it, it often doesn't work perfectly. Okay. It's not a giant pen. It's it's fairly slim. Uh, it's not super long. It's it's decent size. You can post it very comfortably. It posts fairly deeply, and you have a really nicely sized pen that's really quite light. Now, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? One thing that I really like. First of all, a lot of these Chinese pens are very affordable, which makes them kind of fun. They're easy to purchase. Uh, you may have to look around for a bit, uh, especially for Wing Sun models, but you can often find them eBay, those kinds of places. And I don't think this is a horrid pen. It looks interesting. It has that that sort of reticle pattern on the uh, on the barrel and the cap. That makes it look a little less cheap, right? Because it has it has a, a pattern on it. It's not just just a piece of plastic. In this case, it's metal, of course. But I mean, it it has that texture. It's kind of nice. It's a shock when you pick it up because it, you can kind of tell it's metal, and then it's super super light. But the real surprise of this pen for me was the nib, because it's a fairly smooth writer, but it actually has quite some springiness to it. Is it a vintage wet noodle? No, it's not. But it will definitely allow you to use some, or to create some line variation as you write, which is really nice. And I thought that was, that was really a big and pleasant surprise, because it can really add a lot of character to your writing. Especially because it's a very fine nib to begin with. So you have a very fine nib, and yet you can add some character. I'll show you that when we do the writing sample. 
What's there not to like about the pen? Not a whole lot. I mean, is this the ultimate pen you want to give as a fantastic present to your long-loved partner? I'm not sure about that. But it performs. Now, there's one objective flaw I actually found, and that is that it is possible when you unscrew the section, right? That's what you should do. But if you hold it a bit too highly, as I've done before, and I kind of sabotaged this earlier by using a little bit of rubber to, to make that happen, because it actually happened to me. I'm sitting at my desk, I was trying to unscrew it, and what happened was, look at the section, look at the nib, I unscrewed the whole thing. So you have the breather tube that's stuck into the sack to keep uh, ink uh, uh, flowing in and all that. Um, you, you unscrew the whole thing. So nib and, and, and feed are... Uh, I have to be careful not to turn this over. I almost tilted this, showering myself with ink. Wet ink, t-shirt, contest, etc. Um, clearly that's not how it should be. And that's an issue. Because if you do this, and you turn this over, ink may flow out a bit, uh, and clearly that's not how it was meant to be. Is this really a big issue, Brown? No, it's not really a big issue. It's just something you need to be aware of. And once you tighten it, it doesn't happen. So, I've just tightened it. Clearly not the right way, because the feed is in the wrong way around. But now I can unscrew it. Of course, now it doesn't work. Now the whole thing comes out. Disaster. Being a fun review is not that easy, you know. I've tightened this and now it comes out perfectly. So it's not really a big deal. All I'm saying is, be aware of it, all right? Be aware of it, and I now have to see and figure out if I can put this back together. Um, but be aware of it if you use this particular pen that you carefully unscrew it, and when you do, really hold it at the bottom. Don't hold it there, because it can just unscrew the wrong way around. That's it. Now having said that, what else is wrong with it? Nothing really. It's a very affordable pen. What do you expect? You can't buy a pen for this amount of money, uh, which typically is a couple of dollars, yeah? Let's call it $15 and go really wild. You can't expect the same thing as buying a $900, $1,500 pen. You can't expect that. But for what you pay, I think you get a pretty sweet deal with this pen. So that's all I have to say about that. We need to see how it writes. That's what's coming up next. William, thanks a lot for sending me this pen. I appreciate it. Sorry it took me a while to review it. The, the review pile grows by the day here. I'm sorry, but I did what I could. Um, thanks again. High resolution pictures, as well as measurements of the pen, will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. Let's see how this baby writes. It's coming up next. Hope this was useful so far. And as always, I'll very gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay. So... Here we go with the wing song. Now, before everyone is terrified that this is horribly scratchy, yes, there is feedback as you write, but bear in mind, a, a camera microphone always picks up the noise. So it's not a terribly scratchy pen. It's not unpleasant to use. It's just a very fine nib, and the camera picks that up. Yes, I will feel feedback, but it's, it's not horrible. Wait. Yes, you get the point. Uh, here we have a fine nib, which is just steel. Let's do some writing. I like it. It's a strange pen, but I, I, I like it. Okay, some fast writing. Uh, skip there, that was user error. I, I uh, misaligned the pen. Well, it's a pretty sweet writer. I mean, it does, it does perform well. It doesn't really skip horribly, so that's, that's very nice. As to wetness of the pen, Pretty fine nib, and this ink, by the way, I'm pretty sure this was just uh, Mont Blanc bl Royal Blue. Um, not particularly wet, but it is very fine. Now, I was kind of talking about the, the, the nib's um, light flexibility, or springiness, I should say. Oops. Of course, now it doesn't want to do that anymore. It is a smooth paper.
I've had better performance with that than that. And that's why I'm going to cheat and I'm going to prime the feet a little bit. Okay, let's see what that does. Could be the Rhodia paper, that's very smooth paper, but I've, I've used it on paper with a bit more, uh, that's a bit more absorbent, and I didn't get as much uh, railroading as I'm getting now. So, let's try that again. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. So, you can definitely um, squeeze out some light variation. There we go. That was maybe me going too fast. But as you can see, and that I find very fascinating. I mean, that is definitely quite impressive, I would say, for a pen like this. So I really like that. Reverse writing works very well. But it's pretty much the exact same as normal writing, so probably not the most useful thing for this pen. And there you have it. William, thanks for sending me this pen. I appreciate it. Guys, I hope this was useful. And um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.